Hello, hello, good people. This is your guy, Mr. Educated, Mr. Communicated, Mr. Free Thinker, coming back at you live once again from the Lone Star State with another edition of the Media Mike Speaks. All right, good people. This story comes to us from one of my subscribers, and this is right here in our own backyard in the grand old state of Texas in the city of Dallas. Yes, as you saw in the title, we have a judge, a Dallas County judge that allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly, had one of her employees, I guess a court coordinator, stand in for her doing a court proceeding. Now we're going to talk about this because one of my subscribers told me to do a quick story on this. So after reading about it online and also reading about it in the paper, I said, well, it must be something to this. So they have this out there. So anyway, as a disclaimer, look, um, we're not trying to discredit this judge. We're just going to go over this story that allegedly she's been accused of doing. So let's get to it. A group of lawyers has accused a Dallas County judge of forcing a staff member to impersonate her during an online court proceeding in August. That's a pretty strong language. Forcing a staff member to impersonate her? Okay. Hmm. But let's get to this. Let's continue. The Dallas Criminal Defense Lawyers Association filed a complaint in late November to the State Commission on Judicial Conduct alleging that Amber Givens no, you know, the young lady you saw in the thumbnail, the presiding judge of the 282nd Judicial District Court had her court coordinator illegally conduct a court hearing in her steed. You know, I guess sitting in for her. So these are pretty serious, well, not charges. This is a pretty, pretty serious charge. And we'll let you know, I'll let you know what that charge is. Now, the judge Givens denied the allegations in a statement, statement provided to WFAA saying these claims are unsubstantiated and that it is a false narrative unquote but that concerns me because she's saying it's a yeah these claims are unsubstantiated meaning it's something to it but it may be it may be a misunderstanding I don't know now it is the latest of four complaints filed against Givens all relating to her online behavior and actions during court proceedings since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Now, in November, uh, in a November 16th email obtained by WFAA through an open records request, Dallas County District Attorney John, uh, is his name uh, Cruzat, told Givens that he intended to open a criminal investigation into the accusations. Cruzat's email came in response to an October 22nd email Givens had sent him that said one of Cruzat's prosecutors Cruzot's prosecutors was falsely accusing her of courtroom improprieties. Now, it seems to me she was trying to get out ahead of this by contacting the district attorney. Just seems to me. Now, Cruzot declined to comment on any investigation plans when contacted by WFAA. Now, as I stated earlier, good people, if you impersonate a public servant, it is a third degree felony under the Texas Penal Code. So this is what someone faces and it would be the coordinator <laughs> exactly because she's the one are they saying impersonated to judge now the August 3rd proceeding in question was related to reducing the bail for one said Floyd Lee who was in jail for allegedly violating his probation in a burglary case the proceeding was conducted via zoom and a picture of Judge Givens was shown instead of her being live in the video. Which is judges are supposed to be live in the video. They, they should. We'll talk about that toward the end. Now, this is according to Amanda Brainer, president of the Dallas Criminal Defense Lawyers Association, which filed the complaint. Now, according to Brandon, they're saying during the hearing, a voice addressed the virtual court and brought it to order by calling it on the record. The defendant and defense counsel then both addressed the voice as your honor and judge. Neither were corrected, I guess, by the voice, the other person on the other end, according to the grievance filed against, against Givens. Now, I guess they're saying that when they said, yes, you, you know, your honor, a judge, if her 
assistant or coordinator was on that call but pretending to be the judge then she didn't correct him she, she let it roll as your honor now on the call Lee Bales Lee's bail was reduced from one hundred thousand dollars to twenty-five thousand, and he was required to wear an electronic monitor once released from jail. Now, per the grievance, after the hearing, the prosecutor reported to his supervisor that they did not believe it was Givens, but rather her court coordinator, Osceola Warfield, who spoke, reduced the bail, and conducted the hearing. Hmm. Now, the prosecutor's supervisor then notified the defense attorney of this belief, according to the grievance, which also said that the supervisor spoke with two probation officers and, while doing so, saw a note in the, in the probation file that said, Judge was not present for the hearing, unquote. Okay. What strikes me is, why would they lie? Why would they put their careers at risk? Now, the grievance also noted that the supervisor later tried to discuss the case with the same pair of probation officers, but that they had since been told, oh, but that they had since been told by the supervisor not to talk about the case unless subpoenaed. The Dallas County District Attorney's Office then requested a transcript of the hearing, but per the grievance, the court reporter told them the proceeding was not on the record, as if it was a traffic court. Because, good people, if just in case you did or did not know, a traffic court is not a court of record, so you would not have a stenographer there. But this was quite strange. Well, she's saying it was a hearing, but no need to have a court reporter there. I don't know. Now, Judge Amber Given actively controls most aspects of her docket, according to Brandon, as she notes in the grievance. She goes on to say, we do not believe that Given's court coordinator acted independently but rather at the explicit direction of Judge Givens by requesting or ordering Ms. Warfare to conduct a hearing in her absence. Judge Givens not only violated her ethical duties but also facilitated a criminal offense unquote. Well I don't know. Now in a statement in her defense provided to WFA, Givens said that she was unable to directly log her to Zoom because according to her she had technical difficulties with the Zoom app. She said she provided her log login credentials to her court coordinator due to those complications. She goes on to say, my court coordinator placed me on speakerphone and I advised the parties that I would approve the agreement and to make sure that the defendant received the conditions of bond. Unquote. Givens added that since there was no contested issues, the proceeding was not an actual hearing and no court reporter's record was made. This all sounds a little suspicious. Now, Givens has served as the judge of the 282nd Judicial District Court since 2015 and is up for re-election in 2022. No one has yet filed to oppose her in the election. The filing deadline is December 13. Now, it is my understanding that the prosecutors who allegedly accused the judge of not being at the hearing have been reassigned to other cases. Why? Good question. Also, it is my understanding that according to the article that Judge Givens had her camera off during the hearing as we talked about and she just had a silhouette, a picture up there. Things that make you go, hmm. Now, I don't know what procedure, uh, uh, what the procedure is as for having your camera off during a court proceeding, but I would think that the judge uh, would and should be cammed up, you know, as to have parties who are in and such, you know. To tell you the truth, this seems fishy to me. Now, I'm not attempting to discredit this young lady. Congratulations on her accomplishments. But if this is found to be true after the investigation is concluded, then she most likely will have done that to herself. So let me know what you think, uh, good people. Is the judge guilty or not guilty? Uh, bear in mind that you are innocent until proven guilty she is or the coordinator. What do you think here? Did the judge do some nefarious things or told the coordinator to do some nefarious things? I don't know. So let me know what you think about this case. Feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. Until next time, this is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night.